What's up guys, Lifting here. Welcome back to the Path of Exile Survival Guide, episode number 5. The show where I take a character from the very early start at the beach at level 1 and we take him all the way into endgame. And on the way I aim to teach you everything I know about the game so that you hopefully can apply that to your own game and get more enjoyment out of it. Because it is a pretty damn fantastic game once you get into it. Today uh, we're going to continue from where we left off uh, the last time we got to the prisoner's gate and uh, our goal is to get into Mervale's caverns and also defeat the end boss of Act 1. And it's pretty exciting today because uh, once we get to Mervale's caverns we will unlock Ark and this is going to be a duel, or not a duel, but a Hierophant uh, Totem Ark build. And uh, we already unlocked Spell. Uh, totem we did that in the last episode so once we get arc we can start pairing it up with that we won't rely on it uh, as our main skill until we get um, ancestral bond up here so we can get at least two totems so we're gonna do like a, a mix between um, arc totem and freezing poles or self-cast arc we'll we'll get to see that once we get there to see what what feels the best to just level with i'm pretty sure arc will feel fine on itself um, but maybe we want to do like a freeze pulse totem then to have supplementing damage or something like that. But it's something we can experiment with uh, once we get there. One thing we also want to do today is to craft a lightning wand, a plus one lightning wand, um, to scale the damage of our uh, arc once we get that. But maybe we should save that until we actually get to, um, or once we get the arc gem. Um, another thing we also need to do is to buy ourselves a clarity so that we can sustain our mana. And I'm going to search clarity here, just in case you don't know. Um, when you look at the uh, uh, NPC's inventory browse, you can always type or press Control F like you would do in your browser if you search for something. And it uh, allows you to type down here. So in this case, we want uh, clarity. Now, it's not going to show you which tab uh, this would be in, but you always know that the gems, if a vendor has them, it's always on the other tabs or the leftmost or rightmost, I mean. And we can see it highlights for us here. So you can press Control F again, and you could search for incinerate if that was a thing here, or um, volatile. Yeah, I'm searching for all the things that's not here right now, of course, but onslaught. Right. You get the point. Control F. That's the uh, that's the keyword, and you can do that in your stash too. And one thing we're gonna do before we head out on our adventure is that we're actually gonna talk a bit about the stash because somehow I haven't talked about the stash, and we're like five hours into this. Uh, it's not e it's not that big of a thing either, but uh, still, there's a few things you need to know about that. Uh, if you're new, but we're gonna buy our clarity. It costs one orb of transmutation, and as you may remember. An orb of transmutation is a currency item that can upgrade a normal item, a white item, to a magic item and give it either one or two affixes, one prefix and one suffix, or one of the or one or the other. Um, so clarity, boom. What clarity does is that it casts an aura that grants mana regeneration to me and my allies. Um, since we're playing solo, it doesn't really matter too much with that. But you can see uh, your nearby allies regenerate 2.9 mana per second. So it doesn't sound like much, but keep in mind that this is a level 1 clarity. And um, we don't even have that much mana in the beginning. Also considering that the cost of Freeze Pulse right now is 9 mana. And we can cast like a little less than 2 of these per second. So it's going to help sustain it. But the thing is, the higher you level Clarity, the more mana it's going to reserve. And Clarity is slightly different from many of the other auras in this regard. 
uh, back in the day, like way back, way, 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 way back in the beginning of Path of Exile, most auras had like a, 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 a set mana uh, reservation, kind of like Clarity does right now. So let me demonstrate this, I guess. We'll go outside. It's not too important either, but it's, uh, it's pretty fun if you didn't know this back in the day. So uh, if you reserve mana, you can see it reserves uh, 34. When it levels up, it's probably going to reserve like 40 something and all the way up to, I think it's 300 and something. I, can, I can't really remember, but we'll, we'll get to find that out as we go. Uh, most auras in Path of Exile right now, all auras actually, except for Clarity, reserve percentages. So typically these are found in 35% um, such as Discipline and Vitality. Then you have the um, Heralds, of course, they reserve 25%. These are not considered auras, but they are reserving mana, of course, and eliciting a somewhat similar effect to an aura, right? And then you have the big auras like Wrath and uh, Anger. Wrath is something we'll be using for our build. It gives more lightning damage to our spells. And they reserve 50%. But somehow, for some reason, Clarity has not been changed as the only one. It has that set mana uh, reservation. Um, but the nice thing about this is that the more mana we then get, the less of an impact this is going to have. And since we are playing a mind over meta build, we'll be picking up a lot of mana nodes. This means that our mana pool will eventually be so huge that even at the highest level, the amount of mana reserved is going to be a tiny amount of the total mana we have available for our uh, build. This is unlike, or I guess you could say unlike, the Wrath uh, aura that we're going to use, which reserves 50% of our mana. And then you may ask, like, why would you reserve 50% of your mana if you're going to be mind over mana? Isn't that going to leave you with less mana? And that is absolutely correct. Uh, and that for that reason, we're going to use the Essence Worm Ring. And the Essence Worm Ring is a unique ring that um, basically the only thing it does is that it gives, as far as I remember, it also gives levels to the, um, to the aura. But it's an unset ring. You can put the aura in there. If you put the aura in that ring, it doesn't reserve any uh, other or any mana at all. So you basically get like a free aura. But it does give a... No uh, an increased multiplier to other auras we're running. So if we were to run other auras on top of it, they would have a higher mana cost. And in this case, we are running Clarity, but uh, since Clarity is a flat amount and we're going to have so much mana, it's not gonna matter too much. Now that was a long explanation for something like that, but I just thought you might find it interesting that back in the day, like Anger, uh, Wrath, Haste, I'm as far as I know and remember, I'm pretty sure they all had that they all had a set mana cost. And the problem was that eventually they got to the point where people started to have so much mana that people could preserve so many auras at the same time. And it basically became about having as many auras as you could uh, to scale it because they were very powerful. Now, with all that said, we have clarity in our setup. We have mana region now, and we'll see it how in more in action as we go out. But let's talk quickly about the stash. Now, when you open your stash for the first time, if you are completely new to Path of Exile, if you're playing on a new account, your stash is going to look different than mine. First of all, you're only going to have four stash tabs. And those four stash tabs are referred to as non-premium stash tabs. There's two differences between those. Um, let's open a regular one, actually. So you, it's going to look like this, and then you would have these four. A non-premium stash tab is basically just regular storage. So anything you uh, shove in here can be accessed by your character at any point, no matter where you are in the different acts. It's basically just to help you clear up your inventory so you don't have to carry around a lot of crap. A premium stash tab will allow you to press this here, public, and then you can select um, these different price variations or different options to set a price on an item. And in short, what a premium stash tab allows for is for you to sell directly out of your stash tab. So let's say I wanted to sell the spell totem support gem, no one would be, buy that. But let's say I wanted to do that. 
and I have a premium stash tab, then I could choose each item individually priced. If I pick this option here, then I can go to each item that I put in here. I can right click it and then I can set like a negotiable price or an exact price, or I can tell it to not index, which basically means that I don't want it to pop up on PoE trade. I don't want this item to be something people can search for and contact me about. Uh, you can also set a note, which um, I don't, I ne never use this, but basically you can, you can use it as both as a price measure, but also as an information to the buyer if they are interested in uh, buying your item, but you need them to know a certain thing about that. For instance, that you're not taking offers lower than 25ks or something like that. But the difference you need to know about negotiable price and exact price, and I think this is a little important because um, a lot of people wouldn't know about this unless they've been in the game for a while. Uh, but basically, a negotiable price means that if I were to set a negotiable price of uh, five orbs of alteration, then when people search for my item on PoE trade, they will see that I have a negotiable price of five orbs of alteration, and they can contact me about that. If I set it to negotiable price, it means that I'm uh, basically saying that it's okay for people to try and haggle with me. So if I'm just if I'm setting a negotiable price of five orbs of alteration on this here, and I'm like. Ugh, this is just what I'm, this is kind of what I want to have. I'm going to offer it for this. But if someone wants to offer me four, then sure, go ahead. I'm, I can live with that. Or, you know, or if it, it can also mean that instead of paying orbs of alteration, then they will give you a type of currency that's equivalent to the value of five orbs of alteration. Um, if that makes any sense. So like, for instance, let's say we set it to three orbs of alchemy. Negotiable primes, where are they? Right. So if it's set to three orbs of alchemy, this is approximately equivalent to a chaos orb. So someone might then whisper you and ask you if you would take one chaos orb for it instead of the orb of alchemy. Now, if you don't want the heckle or if you don't want people paying you in other types of currency than what you have specifically listed it for, you set exact price. Exact price means that it's a fixed price. You have no interest in, in haggling. You have no interest in, in uh, bargaining. And this is also, in, in some way, this is also uh, nice for you if someone is trying to barter still, because some people will always try and barter, no matter what. But they can see that it's fixed on the website when they do so. And so for from your perspective, you can simply tell them that it's a fixed price. You have no interest in, in bartering. Now, the problem is, of course, if people don't know the difference between a fixed price, exact price, right, and the negotiable one. And that's why I'm telling you guys now. That's the difference between those two. Most people know it, uh, but there's still a lot of people that don't. Just let them know it's a fixed price. You have no interest in uh, bartering or getting equivalent currency for your item. Um, the thing is, as I said, you can only do this if it's a premium stash tab. Now, I'm not going to be... Um, I'm not like I'm not sponsored by GGG or anything like that, so I'm not going to be like heavily promoting anything, and I don't get anything from doing so. But I do really recommend that if you are enjoying Path of Exile and you can see yourself playing this game for longer periods of time, then I highly, highly recommend that you get the following types of uh, stash tabs, and I'll show you now. Um, I'll show you the stash tabs first, and then we can. Sh I'll show you what they cost. We're not going to talk about cosmetics yet. We'll talk about that later. So this you see here, I have named it C, and you can do that, by the way, with any stash tab, as far as I remember. I think, no, maybe you can't even rename them if they aren't premium. I can't remember that. But either, if, if they're premium, at least, um, then you can rename them. That's a guarantee. This here is something I've called C, and it stands for currency. I don't like having long names for my stash tab, because as you can see, it takes up more space, and it means I have, I have to cycle through more, more, uh, many more of my stash tabs to see what it is that I want on my first page. So I just call it C, or I give it like a dollar sign or something like that. 
Uh, now this one here I have not made public and that's because the stuff that I put in here I don't want to trade for. This is something I use for storage and this is a currency stash tab. Basically a stash tab that specifically um, stores currency items only. Um, the nice thing about this is that it gives you easy access and overview of the amount of items that you have. So when you are opening your currency stash tab, you will just hold control down. That's the, that's the key here. Otherwise you have to do it with the mouse, hold control down and then click the stuff and they automatically get sorted into the categories uh, for each currency item here. It gives a better overview uh, as opposed to back in the day where you would, let me show you how I would do it back in the day. You would, um, let's say you would start up here like with the currency that isn't worth much. So I'll take this out. I'd put my Orb of Alteration here and put my Transmutation here. Then I put my Chromes and you know, all the way down. And then when I got more Chromes, for instance, or a stack was filling up, I would make like these brackets all the way down. So I could still have some sort of uh, organized layout for my currency, but I really, really think that the currency stash tab is one of the best purchases you can uh, make for yourself because it becomes very tedious to having to, to, to do that for a long time where you manually sort it and such. Um, that's probably the most important one. And then there is the map stash tab. Uh, I'll show you that once we get to maps, but basically what that does, it's it's similar to, no, I guess I can show you now. It may just not make too much sense to you yet if you haven't uh, seen it yet. So is this, yeah, this should be a map stash tab. Basically, uh, if you have map items, the stuff you do for endgame, you control click it, it can sort it into the various tiers here. This makes it much easier to keep an overview of and again, just helps you minimize the amount of time you have to manually sort it. So map stash tab, currency stash tab, I think those are amazing. And then get at least like three, four uh, premium stash tabs where you can put items in that you can put up for sale. You don't have to buy it all at once, of course, you can buy them one at a time, but I really think that over time you, you're gonna thank yourself for that. Also because trading without using the premium stash tabs, that is it's a very tedious process. I'm not really going to go into that because it's just, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's too much uh, effort and most people can at, at least afford to buy maybe a single premium stash tab if you just want to have one tab for the types of items you want to um, sell. And I'll, let's show what, let me show you what the prices are in these things here. And one thing to consider is that these things go on sale quite a lot and you make a, or you can save quite a big, amount on doing that. So what you can see, like for instance, right now, as of today, it's uh, the 7th of January. Happy New Year, by the way, guys. Uh, there's a special on upgrading to premium stash tab. So this year will make it so that if you were to buy this, the regular stash tabs that you have right now, you can upgrade them and turn them into a premium stash tab that has the functionality that I just showed you. It's not gonna give you the currency stash tab, but it, we're talking about the regular ones here. And you can see 10, 10 um, points here. This is very cheap, like 50 uh, points, for instance, that's equivalent to $5. So it's, it's no big investment. And I really recommend that if you're going to be playing the game for a lot. But of course, figure out if the game is for you first, uh, if you haven't already. There is more to the whole stash stuff, like there's divination uh, tabs that sort your divination cards. There is an essence tab, which I like to. It helps you organize your essences uh, as like this one here, for instance, we found that the last time. So you can click here, it comes in here. You can see there's the different tiers of the essence. Then let's say I have three of these and click, uh, click upgrade and then press it here and I can upgrade it into higher tiers. So it helps you sort them and manage them. Uh, the divination card, Stash tab is probably the one I find to be the least useful. Um, it's more because I like having it and having the extra organization uh, to it, but it's you can always just put your divination cards into a regular tab and and search for the names of them. So I'm not, I'm not sure if I find it to be too useful. Then you can also get the uh, 
storage tabs is what I call them. It's basically a quad stash tab. It has the size uh, of a regular stash tab times four. And these are great. I use them quite a lot so when I just do farming sessions and I just want to dump a lot of stuff in there and then identify and check the value of them at a later time. Um, but these are also completely extra, right? Um, and I think, oh yeah, there's the, uh, the fragment tab or whatever it's called. Basically, this is where you put a lot of the items in that you don't, if you at this point haven't found already. Splinters for breach stones, uh, fragments for Atsiri, Council, uh, Shaper, and Uber Atsiri. And then uh, the newly added stuff, the Scarabs, you can put them in here. This one here is rather, rather unneeded too. It's nice if you have it, but very unneeded. Oh, unnecessary. I think these are like the ones I want to show you now. Now I have multiple currency stash tabs and all that stuff. Just ignore that. It's because I have my own reasons for that. It's uh, to be able to have one that's not indexed and one that's indexed. And for when I make certain videos and such, then I don't want to... I want to have places where I can put um, my results of farming a specific area into one place without interacting with what I already have. All right. Let's not talk more about the stashes now. Maybe we'll do that at a later time too, but... My recommendation, get uh, at least a couple of premium uh, upgrades for your regular tabs and a currency stash tab. That's the most important, in my opinion. Maybe the map stash tab once you get there. For now, I think it's time to head out. And uh, we want to go towards... Uh, we'll go back to the prisoner's gate. And then we want to move towards Mervale's caverns. Our quest right now is... Uh, we have the way forward, which actually takes us into Act 2. So it's not something we can complete here, but we will encounter like an encounter up here that tells us to go to Act 2 to solve it. Then we have the prisoner's fate. We've saved Navali. We need to talk uh, to her and learn about prophecies. We'll do that once we get uh, a little later into the game too. And then we have the dirty job quest, which we decided to skip because it's an optional. It gives respect points, but we don't need the respect points now. So the thing that actually leads us right now is actually the way forward. But as you will see here in just a bit, it will tell us to go somewhere else and then we'll get a new quest objective. So we will move out. We have our clarity up and running. And um, I still have like my added lightning. And one thing that could maybe be nice would be to take out uh, either Arcane Search or uh, Onslaught for that. But I feel like our damage is so good right now that it's not really worth it. So we'll keep our, uh, onslaught in so we get the movement speed and all that stuff. So this is the one that updates the quest and it then tells us to go find, find another way around. And what we'll do is that we'll do that. We'll run around and uh, see where it takes us. And what we're looking for is like a cleft. It's typically or it's always on either to the uh, left or right of, of this here. And once you see like this hill that goes down, you know that you are in the right path and it will take you uh, further into the uh, prisoner's gate. Now we are uh, uh, like slightly over leveled, we're one level above, so we don't really care about killing single monsters that's standing around, but there is an essence here, and uh, we might as well get that. There's also a syndicate event going on right over there, so let's deal with those. And if you watched the latest video, you may remember that the essences are the uh, ones that dropped the item that we just took a look at with the stash tab thing, like the essence stash tab, is a whispering essence of woe. And what we can see is that this one here gives specific upgrades, stats, affixes onto a, a white item if we decide to use it on that. So if I were to use it on a, I don't have any white items right now, but let's say that this ring here was white, it was not magical. Then if I were to use it on this ring, I would gain at least between one to three maximum energy shield. So instead of using an alchemy orb, which just gives random rare uh, or affixes and makes it rare, then this one here will make it uh, rare, but it will give it a, in a more controlled environment. This is great if you want to craft something specific. Let's pick up the Jade Amulet. Like we could have done it on that, for instance. It would give increased maximum energy shield, but in uh, percentages. Here's the other thing, like the strong box. We talked briefly about that the last time. Remember that strong boxes needs to be 
viewed as items, as in the sense that you can see this is this is blue text. It's a magic strong box. It means that if I had an orb of alteration on me and I ident identified it, I'd be able to reroll this strong box to get various bonuses and, and such on it. But I don't really have the desire to do so. It's generally not worth it unless you run into the Arcanist strong box or the um, Diviner strong box, with Diviner strong box typically being the most valuable. So let's deal with the syndicate here. It's a transportation syndicate, and it seems like we have Haku here. Haku is by far, in my opinion, one of the absolute most dangerous. He has some insane damage when you get hit by his slash, and by I think one of the hardest things about him is that uh, you can't... There's so much stuff going on, right? It's sometimes a little hard to see him coming out of nowhere, and all of a sudden you're just slammed, slammed to death. So Haku, what can, what options do we have here? Hmm. We can interrogate him and get some transportation per turn for a total of nine. Or we can just uh, bargain with him and get six right now. So I don't really want to reduce his level. I'm not, not or uh, rank. And we do that. When you interrogate him, he loses a rank. We're not really interested in that. We just want to keep the ranks up because that means better rewards. Uh, but probably also uh, making them stronger. So there is that, of course. But we just want to keep him up here because I like having him aligned to fortification. If he were to lose his rank, he would also lose his alignment uh, or transportation, sorry. And then we would have to get him fitted in somewhere else. So we'll just we'll bargain with him and we'll get the a bit of safe house uh, info here. We'll pick up the yellow here and the chromatic item. And that's about it. I can keep picking up various rares and all that stuff, but it's not really worth it for us anymore. Um, or uh, magics, sorry. Rare items can probably still be worth it in many cases. Um, or will be in many cases. We'll get the blues here for the extra experience they give. And here's another essence down here. This is another essence of woe. I think was that's what we had just before too. Yeah, woe is typically the ones that give energy shield. So let's get that. And there was a leather belt there. Now a leather belt, that's one of the best bases you can get uh, for any life base to build, it is, at least in the beginning. Later you can argue that there are better ones. Oh, and I think I turned off my aura by accident. Yeah, let's turn that on. And uh, one thing you probably also need to know that many people don't know, uh, and I can't blame them, but that is if you have an aura activated somewhere on your keybinds, you can always just activate it and then remove it and place something else there. It will still remain activated. Um, the only time you will have to find it again is if you die and have to reactivate the auras. So you don't have to have the auras on your keybinds or your taskbar down here or whatever you want to call it. Um, let's pick the leather belt. The reason the leather belt is great is because the leather belt just straight up gives flat life. Uh, whereas some of the other belts, they give uh, energy shield, they give increased physical damage, they can give... I can't even remember, but the, <laughs> things like that. There's, uh, But in general, for many life-based belts, in the beginning, leather belts are great. Also because the this is an implicit mod, as we talked about in the previous video. If you then get a really good explicit life roll to then you can get a high total amount of life on leather belts, which allows your skill tree and percentage increases to scale very effectively into, into late game. But you typically see, like, for, for very late game, a lot of people will go over and they'll start using sticky end belts uh, or the crystal belts, which is like the upgraded energy shield belts. Um, sticky end belts are from the Abyss, uh, chests, but we haven't seen those yet. We'll talk about them when we get there. So we got into the ship graveyard. In the ship graveyard, there are something mysterious going on. It's very obvious, right? <laughs> but what we can do here is that there is an optional quest. We can go. Uh, we can go and try and, and find an entrance to like a shipwreck. And I advise 
that we do so, because by completing that optional quest where we then have to find an item for Fairgraves who's standing up there, by turning that in, that will grant us an ex extra skill point. It's one of those optional quests that's grained, or that grants a skill point. So that's typically a good idea. But the other thing we can do here is simply to go through it and into Mervale's caverns. And uh, there's, there's a few ways of, of doing so, but depending on the layout, sometimes it can actually be a good idea if you grab the waypoint early on when you got into the um, ship graveyard, if you then encounter Mervale's caverns before you find um, the ship uh, where the optional quest is, it can be a good idea to go in there and then grab the waypoint that's just on the other side of that and then take the waypoint back to this place and go find the, sh the ship just to save you a bit of time. Um, but let's see what we find first in our... Uh, case here and we will just skip some stuff we have another syndicate up here and another transportation who is the one that we're, we're fighting this time it is is it Jorgen I can't see it right now yeah it's Jorgen and let's see what reward he uh, greens us there we go nice to get those guys down um so with this here we can choose to get uh, him interrogated for points safe house points or intelligence or we can uh, ask him we can move him to fortification too and then we can move leo over to transportation so the thing we you really have to consider here is what is there to gain by that and this can be a little hard to know unless you already know what type of rewards these different syndicate guys can grant you but for instance we can see that Jorgen here he carry he's carrying talismans on pilgrimage it is um, information that is related to the type of items he can drop if he is connected to the transportation uh, safe house once you rate that uh, so for instance like right now we know these guys here these are all aligned to safe uh, to the uh, transportation safe house and once we can get this to a hundred uh, we can go into the safe house and if they are aligned to this we will fight those guys in there together with uh, the safe house uh, master so we would be fighting Jorgen in there in this safe house if we were to get it opened up and then we can see that once we fight him in there it's talismans on a pilgrimage that it's that line that indicates what type of items you can drop and talismans is a type of amulet um, that you can get from Talisman League, but I'm not really too interested in that. I actually, I wouldn't mind getting uh, Jorgen over to uh, Fortification. I can't remember what he get gifts, but uh, let's try and see. So this will then take Leo over here, of course, to Transportation, and we'll move him over there. Once we do so, we can see that the type of rewards that Jorgen will then give if... Uh, encountered in the uh, fortification safe house which is now aligned to is different it's just channeling the first ones and i honestly can't remember what that is but when i play uh, on my uh, high level characters what i typically go for is to either there's two things i you can either do it for a lot of currency farming in research and try to get it that flat up here so you can get a lot of breach stone upgrades these sell for a lot and it that flat is one of the syndicate uh, members or uh, my preferred method, I guess, for like overall gains is to get uh, the intervention safe house uh, rated while I have Haku over there. Sometimes Jorgen, um, Tora can be good over there. You definitely want Chimeria. And Gravitius is very nice over there because intervention safe house in general the people that are aligned with that safe house once you raid it they will typically drop scarabs the new type of items introduced uh, with bestiary not bestiary <laughs> betrayal um and these scarabs can either be used for your own and uh, basically you can put a scarab together with a map and you will be able to control what's in that map so 
if I have a sulfide scarab there, it's not what it's called. I can't remember what it's called. But if you put that together in there, one of those scarabs with a map, then you will have a guaranteed Nico spawn in there, which means that you will be able to gain sulfide for the mines. The mines, you haven't seen that yet, but I think it, obviously a lot of you guys are much further ahead than this, so you probably know what the mines are. But in short, basically by having the Movite Intervention, you can get these guaranteed scarabs that you can use for mapping. And I like having uh, Jorgen, Haku, uh, Chimeria, um, it that flat I believe is pretty good over there too, yeah, for breach, breaches and so forth. Because they can be sold or you can use them for yourself. It'll make much more sense once we get further in. Let's pick up the yellows here because we can always sell them uh, for transmutation orbs which are still useful for us. Let's check the boots. We, maybe we get lucky that these boots, since they can roll more affixes, will also roll movement speed and maybe something that's even better. So let's check. Now these don't have movement speed. They have a lot of affixes and such, but bleh. I still want the movement speed. So let's let's just stick to that. We'll also loot this so we can sell it later, even if we don't identify it. We also leveled up, right? So let's spend a few points here. We are moving from uh, this direction, and then our goal is to get into Ancestral Bond. So we'll go with Elemental Damage and Strength, and then move into Devotion, and then move up here, and then Ancestral Bond, so we can have two totems up at a time. That is pretty nice. Oh, and one thing, I've ma I made a mistake here, like, uh, one th and this is, you guys don't want to do this. So I know I'm going to be using added lightning damage later for my setup. Right now, I just have it in my inventory. That's a mistake. If I'm going to be using a support gem later or any gem for that matter, then I should always make sure that it's socketed somewhere into my gear so it gains uh, experience so that when I eventually am going to use it, then it's not totally outleveled for my character. Um, since we don't really have any specific use for it in any of these here, we're just going to put it into my, our weapon swap setup and then swap back and then it can still gain experience. I also forgot to add in flame dash, which is a movement skill. We definitely want to use that. And since we don't really have any support gems that really influences that right now to any meaningful extent, except for maybe uh, arcane search, we can prog it via that. Well, actually, we could let's do something uh, more interesting here. We'll take out arcane search from our racing pole setup, right? So we can no longer prog arcane search, which gives us more spell damage and mana, region and cast speed. Um, but we got a pretty big damage boost by adding added lightning to the freeze pulse setup. So freezing pulse now deals both cold and lightning damage because of the added lightning damage support uh, that's linked to it. Um, but it's a pretty big loss to lose arcane search because that's a very strong buff too. So to proc arcane search, we need to find another skill to do that with a skill that we preferably use rather often so that the buff remains rather consistent um, and since we uh, will be using flame search for some moving around, why not link it with f uh, or flame dash? Sorry, flame search. That's an uh, that's another spell. Flame dash. That's a movement skill. So when we use flame dash now, you can see since it has a mana cost, it will proc arcane search. So if we just use a flame search enough, we should rather consistently be able to keep arcane search up. Um, for whenever we uh, we need it. Now we found the cavern of wrath first. This is what leads into the Mareil's caverns, and this is what I was talking about before. If you typically find the cavern of wrath first in the ship graveyard, and you already have the waypoint down there, it's a good idea to just go in here and uh, grab the waypoint. Then you can take uh, the waypoint back, and you can just run out again and start looking for the uh, for the ship it may save you a bit of time at least it's better to go in and grab the waypoint because once we have found or located the ship um we are going to go there anyway right so it saves you a bit of time instead of having to run there then all right a coral ring let's pick that up because uh, i think the coral ring we had now had some rather useless affixes and we can see the orange door down there that indicates that the ship uh, graveyard cave is here. We're going to go down here and that's where the entrance or the uh, item that we're going to uh, find for Fairgraves is. 
I, normally you could also go talk to Fairgrades first, of course. It doesn't matter. He will give you the quest. Um, but if you don't talk to him and you find the item, either way, it yeah, it gives the same result. So you don't have to worry about talking to him uh, before you go in here. And that goes for pretty much any quest in Path of Exile. There's some specific ones where you need to talk something to unlock it, but just just ignore that for now. In general, if you find the items, you can complete the, the quests. All right. So in these uh, like small maze, um, our goal is to get to the uh, end where there's this tiny zone boss. That's not really much of a challenge, but as you can see, here's the quest uh, object that we need to interact with. And there's the exit over there. Once we get here, Strangle Charm will spawn, will cast down our Frost Bomb to reduce her Frost Resistance when we cast a Frost Pulse on our Freezing Pulse on her. And then we will click the Slave Girl, and not in a dirty way. We now have the uh, quest update that says Investigate the All Flame. And it tells us to search the ship graveyard to find the purpose of the All Flame. So we're going to go back to the ship graveyard. Now, if uh, this was very close to Fair Graves in the waypoint, there wouldn't be any point to it. But since we know it's, it's kind of far away, we're just going to port back. You could log out there too if you wanted, if you really wanted to. <laughs> uh, and then we're going to take the uh, waypoint to the ship graveyard to save our, ourselves a bit of traveling time because this is this is typically always close to fair graves and then we'll talk to him and see what happens oh what a surprise it was not exactly a trap but we didn't he didn't get that happy uh, he basically wanted it for himself or something like that either way we killed him then it gave us an Quest update, and it tells us then to go and talk to Bestel in town for a reward. So, we can do that. Port, or we can go back like that. Or you could have just run ahead towards Mervale's caverns. But let's let's just get a skill point. It's always nice. And, there we go. Book of Passive Skill Point. Now, we don't have t uh, space for this in our inventory, so we need to get sell some stuff first. We also get... And this is uh, the big thing, guys. Because we entered Mervale's Caverns before and got the waypoint in there too, we unlocked these skill gems. And uh, of these, we can uh, we can choose it right here, but we can then buy it. Arc becomes unlocked once you get that quest done, basically. Uh, let's see if there's anything we really want here, though. Ice Nova... Firestorm, Storm Call, Searing Bond, Scorching Ring. None of this really here is something we want to use for our stuff. So you can just close it down or you can pick the reward and do whatever you want with it, right? But then we want to go over here and we want to search for Ark. Yes! This is what we'll be using for our totems. And we might as well try it out now for some self-casting to see how it feels. I'm going to buy it. It costs one orb of transmutation, unlike... The earlier spells that only cost like a scroll of wisdom. Um, if you lack transmutation orbs to buy things like that, just go out to, into the world, kill some stuff, and then save all the rare items you don't need and blue items you don't need, and then sell them unidentified for transmutation shards. And you can get those transmutation uh, things pretty damn fast. So we're going to do, uh, it's actually what we're going to do right now because I don't need any of this here. Uh, maybe the shield could be interesting. Let's, let's save the shield or let's identify it and see. Fire damage, cast speed, life and lightning resist. Now this would be a pretty damn nice leveling spell shield if we dealt fire damage. If we were using a fire skill, this would be a very, very nice leveling uh, shield. We don't really need that uh, because we're dealing lightning damage, so... The spell damage is still nice, but we can get that from the one side of the way. It has some cast speed and has life. It's pretty nice. But, no, you know what? We're, we're going to keep it. We're going to keep that. We're going to get rid of this here too. And we're going to save this because this is veiled. And uh, we'll talk about that later. We also had the coral ring that I looted before. And let's try and see if we have 
a transmutation orb here. Let's spend a transmute on this normal white ring here to see what kind of magical affix it can give. Because this one here, it gives fire damage to attacks. It ha also has a lower implicit roll. So it's like any any other affix almost on it would be better as long as it's not uh, restricted to melee combats. Evasion rating, <laughs> okay, it's, it's pretty bad too, uh, but... So let, let's follow the fun of it. Let's use an aug augmentation on it too. That will make it so that a magic item adds another uh, affix to it, either a prefix or a suffix, depending on what it already has. And um, uh, so we're going to spend it here. Four tall elemental resistances. I mean, this is definitely better than this. So we're going to do that. Four tall elemental resistances. Very nice. We could also do something with this. No, screw that. This, the very uh, nice thing right now is that we got arc unlocked. So we want to make sure that we set up our arc skill gem setup. And for that, we're just going to, for now, at least take out freezing poles. And then we're going to add in arc for uh, this. So arc is now supported by added lightning and onslaught. We see the tool tip DPS is like 89 right now. And then... Uh, I'll show you how it works, but basically it chains from enemy to enemy and it, uh, it deals a nice amount of damage and it grows obviously stronger and stronger as it levels up, but it can also chain more and more times uh, as it levels up. Let's get rid of uh, the other stuff, I guess. We could use this in our offhand, the shield, for a bit more cast speed in the life and, well, fire damage doesn't matter. But let's, we had our flame dash here with arcane support. Uh, search so we want to make sure that skill gym setup remains intact so we can still use that in Prague arcane search so i think we're going to have to do flame dash here and then take out the clarity and put arcane search there since clarity doesn't need to be linked to anything we're going to put clarity in whatever blue socket that that fits here and frost bomb since we're doing lightning damage now we don't really need it we could potentially keep using uh, freezing pulse with spell totem and use frost bomb to lower it, but it's not really. No, I think for just to not get everything uh, convoluted here, we're just gonna get rid of it. Storm call, like these things, they don't sell for anything. They sell for like a a fragment, a wisdom scroll fragment or whatever they're called. So sometimes I just delete them. They don't have any value. Let's get our other currency in here that we don't need. We can still take this with us. These stacking up to 40. And I guess it could be kind of fun to set up like this freezing pulse setup. Uh, we would need a red and a blue socket for that. So let's see, maybe, um, maybe we can get an item. I don't want to change my weapons or shield, but maybe if there was a chest plate that had it, it could be useful. We don't want to change our boots either because of the movement speed, unless there were boots that uh, also had movement speed. Um, we can do like this one here. Keep in mind that when you wear a chest piece, it slows you down a little. So in general, I, d I rarely do that until I, it becomes necessary. Uh, hmm, the gloves here maybe. We have some decent gloves, but the cold damage to attacks and lightning damage to attacks that only goes for melee attacks or attack based skills where we cast our spells, so it doesn't add to that. But we still gain the life, cold resist, mana gain on kill, and the rarity. However, none of this is really necessary for us to function. Uh, we'll do completely fine without it for now. So let's try and buy the gloves here, and then we could. We could use an essence of woe. It would give, it would give you more uh, uh, energy shield, which is not really uh, that useful for us right now. But we don't have any more transmutes, so we can't upgrade it that way. We don't have any alchemy orbs, so why not, for the fun of it, just use an essence of woe? When they are at this tier, like the lowest tier of essences, they don't really have any value anyway. So we don't have to worry too much about that. So we we do know that once we use this here. We are going to get at least an energy shield roll on it. And we can see that for armor, and this is just a broad category of armors, um, it will give 3 to 5 maximum energy shield. Let's see. Yes. Cold damage to attacks is kind of useless for us. Maximum energy shield, it will be added over here. 
And we can we can use that. It's not the end of the world. Lightning resist is good. Mana gain and kill. It's kind of like the one we already had, so that's okay. So we'll just swap that in. And now we then have the colors to set up spell totem and phrasing poles. Uh, and then we'll get rid of these gloves here. There we go. And since I have an essence tab, I'm just going to sort it in there. And we'll put the augment in there and the armor scrap. And then we'll get rid of uh, this stuff here. But there's one thing we have to do, and that is to get ourselves that lightning wand. Um, in order to do so, we need a transmutation shard. Or we need a transmutation orb. Because we need to turn this magical. And we also need to get, if we can here, yes, a topaz ring. So in order to do so, I think the easiest is going to be, we're going to buy the topaz ring right now. And then we're going to just real quick go to, for the sake of it, we don't want to necessarily continue now uh, because there's not that much time left. But we want to go to um, the coast. Just a random area I selected for this. And then we'll go to the tidal, tidal island. We'll just kill some monsters real quick for the uh, unidentified magic items or rare items. And then we'll sell those so we can get some transportation um, orbs or shards for the orb. And I guess we can demonstrate how this thing works here. So since we have linked freezing pulse right now to uh, the spell totem, that means that when I cast freezing pulse now, it looks like this. We basically have a totem that now casts it for us. And this is what we'll be doing with Ark later, but we kind of want to wait until we get Ancestral Bond so we can cast two of them. When you choose Ancestral Bond, we can't deal damage ourselves, so we have to rely completely on totems. Uh, right now, when we don't have it, we can cast one totem, no more, but we can still deal damage ourselves. And there's definitely setups where you don't want to have Ancestral um, Bond because you want to deal damage yourself, but for this setup, we want to just rely on totems. So we don't care about dealing damage ourselves or directly ourselves. This is Ark you're seeing here, and it feels obviously pretty damn good when we're up against low level monsters, uh, right? That doesn't really uh, challenge us, but it should do completely fine once we get into the other stuff too. So we'll just find Hail Rake here because there's a chance he'll drop a few magic items. Uh, that wasn't much. That was not much. Let's see if we can just get some quick magic items. But let me just quickly find this so I don't waste your time with it. Alright, so we got the Orb of Transportation. What we're going to do then is that we're going to take our Driftwood Wand, our non-magic Driftwood Wand. We're going to use an Orb of Transportation to turn it magic. And actually, this is, I guess this is kind of interesting. This would have been great if we were still using Freezing Pulse. This is the type of thing we're going for, but for Ark, we want plus to level of socketed uh, Lightning Gems. Um, and in order to do so, in order to craft that specifically, because there's tons of things you can roll on items. We could, if you wanted and you had enough alterations, you could just keep spamming them until you eventually got it right, if the item level is appropriate for it at least. Um, but to minimize the cost and uh, target a specific affix, what we can do is that we can take a magic wand. It works for scepters too. I think it works for daggers too. Um, and then we take one orb of alteration and we take um, the topaz ring here, the one that gives lightning resist. If we then go to one of the vendors, doesn't matter which one, and then we offer this here, she will in return give us a socketed to uh, or a wand that gives plus one to level of socketed lightning gems, which is what we're going for here and where we will be putting in our arc setup. We're going to click accept and it uh, retains the sockets that it had before. So that's great. Now, as I've said many times already, spells in general gain a lot by just grinding higher levels. And that's because when you look at arc here, you can see it says deal 7 to 37 lightning damage. And then it has the other things too. But let's just focus on the damage here first of all. Um, this is a flat amount of damage that it grains. If I put it into my 
scepter now it will gain one level and you can see it now deals 8 to 47 lightning damage and that's a big uh, increase just by gaining one level right it also means that if for instance your, your your gem is level 20 max if you were to put it into an item that gave plus one it would then be level 21. the difference uh, the thing that makes this so good for spells is because of the flat amount of damage they gain if we compare this to something like um i guess maybe we can do heavy strike yeah as you can see it says deals it has no flat damage first of all if we were to add uh, heavy strike to a setup and we had a weapon that could use it it would be dependent the amount of damage heavy strike would deal would be dependent on the weapon that we have and you can see it deals 159% uh, of base damage. So if we had a really good weapon with high damage that this could scale off, then it's okay. Like attack skills can be completely fine to use while leveling and can feel great. But it constantly requires that you have a weapon that's up to date uh, for the content that you're progressing into because otherwise that amount of uh, scaling that is on the gem here is not going to do much and when a heavy strike gem or most attack gems level up instead of gaining that flat amount um, or powerful flat amount per level of the gem it just gains a slight percentage increase and that percentage increase is obviously not going to do much if your weapon isn't already good right so that's why spells are very nice for leveling with if you don't feel too comfortable with upgrading your weapons and knowing what's good on a weapon and such. But for now, we can do this here. And also another thing, the plus two level of circuited lightning gems, of course, also influences the added lightning damage support gem we have, because when you look at the tags of the gem, it is a lightning and it is a support. So it fulfills the requirement of being a lightning gem that this wand then gives. Um, we also we can also do another thing just for the sake of it it's not really necessary but we could do it so um it's a magic item now but as i've said a few times a magic item can have two affixes right one prefix and one suffix now we only have one affix on this so why don't we just throw in a augmentation on it to get two because augmentations transmutes alterations in general they don't they aren't that value you'll find a lot of them so don't be afraid to use these um, and let's see what we get accuracy rating that's completely trash <laughs> and when you use a spell i guess that's another one of the benefits to leveling with the spell but spells cannot miss per se uh, if you use an attack you have a you have an amount of accuracy we can see here my main chance to hit right now with default attack is 75 percent if I were to equip this because of the increased accuracy rating I get, it will go up. But I'm using a spell. A spell cannot miss. It can be dodged via something called spell dodge, but that's something completely different and something down the line, uh, not something you have to worry about. Um, so accuracy for us here is completely useless, but it was an org of augmentation. It, very, it has no value, so no big deal. So we're just gonna equip our gems here. And then we're pretty much good to go. We can head into uh, Merveil's caverns and deal with her. But we're going to end for today, guys. This was uh, the Path of Exile Survival Guide episode number five. I hope you enjoyed it. There will be many more episodes out. So make sure you subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you for watching. And bros, do you even nerd?